this video we're going to look at the role of normal profit in the economy and you'll remember from the uh, year one material that there's four different factors of production there's land there's labor there's capital and there's enterprise and you remember i hope that the return that each of these gets is for land you get a rent for labor you get wages capital you pay interest and enterprise you receive your profit okay and we're going to delve deeper into this whole area of, of profit and what that actually means uh, in year two material now so the normal profit the best definition is it's how much you've got to earn what's the what's the reward for that entrepreneur to keep them in the business to keep this entrepreneur engaged and to keep um keeping employing the other factors of production in this particular enterprise and that's called the normal profit so if you're a teacher for example and you're earning um, fifty thousand pounds if you knew that you could earn eighty thousand pounds in another job then the argument is your normal profit is eighty thousand pounds and you'd go and work elsewhere in another job and that's the same for any entrepreneur that is running a business and employing all these um, fa other factors of production that if they closed the firm down and then they basically used the money to go and set up another business if they're earning more that's their normal profit even if they're earning less that's a normal profit so if you're running a little corner shop and you think well I could sell it and set up a you know a car repair shop for example then and, and I could be earning twenty thousand pounds then the normal profit is twenty thousand pounds okay and it includes this idea you see of opportunity cost what can i earn in the next best activity or business if i shut this one down and i took all the factors and i made them work in another business and the argument is in economics that if you don't earn this then you basically leave this industry and go and set up another business or profession so if you ask to define normal profit that's the sort of thing those three things um, you should be um, including in your answer okay all right but in this I am um, when you're starting to build up the cost and the revenue curves of firms it's essential that you know that the cost codes include this element of normal profit as well as all the other costs wages rent raw materials interest etc so for example a very simple example if the average revenue of a firm was 800 pounds that's the revenue they're getting from selling each one and all other costs are 500 pounds then you could argue couldn't you that um you know they're making 300 pounds and the accountant is quite happy and he says to you as an economist well done you've earned 300 quid but for you you might say yes but i could be earning 200 pounds elsewhere so that's my normal profit and that that normal profit should be added into these costs here and so I'm only making super normal above the normal. I'm only making a hundred pounds more than I could earn in the next best use. But I'll still stay in this business though. So here's a quick example. If the average revenue was two thousand pounds and the average cost of your land, labour and capital is fifteen hundred pounds, the accountant is saying to you, that's great, you you're making here, yeah, he's saying you're making five hundred pounds worth of um, profit. But you say, yeah, but wait a minute, I could be earning £300 elsewhere, and so I'm therefore only making super normal profit of £200. And as I say, this idea here is that's the accountant's view of profit. Okay, that's the accountant's view, that's not the economics point of view. Okay, take another example. What if you're earning £2,000 and your cost of labour and capital etc is 1500 but your normal profit is 600 in other words I could get 600 pounds elsewhere the accountant still says well done you know you've made your 500 pounds and you say yeah but hold on I could be earning 600 pounds somewhere else so I'm making a super normal loss in that case of 100 pounds so as a simple example that should help you to work out um, you know the usefulness of this uh, normal profit and as I say remember that you've got to include both of those in your cost curves to make any sense of them in a minute so if 
supernormal profit is made, then it has an allocation of resources role. It ro it, the role of supernormal profit is that it moves the factors of production around the different industries and firms. And you may not have come across perfect and monopolistic yet, but when you do, this will be helpful for you. If you're making supernormal profits in perfect and monopolistic in the short run, then what tends to happen is that other firms are attracted into this industry. And that's the reason is that there's freedom of entry and exit and perfect information. And so therefore you know, everyone knows, well, you're making supernormal profit. And they say, well, I'll tell you what, I'll leave my job and I'll go and work in that industry as well. So what happens is in perfect competition, there's an increase in supply because of the, the other firms coming in increases your supply. Increase in supply is going to reduce the price until the AR equals the ATC and you're only earning normal profit in the long run. In monopolistic competition, it's a similar thing, but you only have the one diagram showing the firm and so the demand curve that faces all firms are going to shift inwards until again AR equals ATC, same as in perfect competition, and you only earn normal profit in the long run. Now you may have to wait um, until you've gone through those two different types of competition to understand that completely. Okay, so basically in the allocation, supernormal profit attracts more firms, factors of production in both these cases, but supernormal losses means a, a firm is going to leave the entrepreneur sees well i can make more in another industry and that leads us then to discuss what we call the shutdown conditions so that's the first part of the shutdown conditions if you like if you're not making supernormal profit if you're making a supernormal loss then you should shut down however you will know from having worked on your um, cost curves that there's a difference in the cost curves in the short and the long run. So basically, shutdown conditions, if you're making a supernormal loss, the first argument is you should shut down. However, you'd be saying it depends, because in the short run, some of those costs are variable costs, so we can lose those, but some are fixed and we can't lose those in the short run, because that's the definition of fixed costs, they're fixed in the short run. So I'll give you an example. The average revenue, if the firm did shut down, would be lost. The variable costs would be lost, but the fixed costs remain in the business. So some some argue that basically all you can do is ignore those fixed costs, if you like. Well, let's look at some numbers to see if that helps you. In the short run, you should remain in the industry, so you should not shut down if, if, if the average revenue is above your average variable cost. So here's an example, average revenue is above my variable cost by £300, my fixed cost of 500 so I'm making a loss. But the problem is, if I shut down, I lose the revenue, I'm going to lose the variable cost, because they can go, because they're variable, but I've got to keep the £500 of fixed cost, I've still got to pay those. That might be if you're running a shop, you're going to be losing... I don't know, um, you know, that might be the rent that you're paying on the shop and you've got a six month contract and you've got to pay that month, you know, that monthly rent for six months. So in other words, that's the idea is that if the firm shuts down, you're going to be making a loss of 500 as opposed to the 200 if it firm stays open. Because here, if the firm remains open, you're going to keep your 1200, you're going to keep paying the 900, so at least you've got that 300 pounds there because the revenue exceeds the variable cost, in order to offset some of those costs there. So therefore, you should uh, remain open as long as the average revenue is bigger than the average variable costs. And that, that um, link between revenue and variable costs there is known as the contribution that each um, product is making to the business. So, what if the average revenue is below your is um, below your fixed costs? Well, here we go. Average revenue a thousand, variable costs are eleven hundred. So I'm making a loss already, and another five hundred. I'm making a loss of six hundred. But if the firm shuts down, here I've got to pay. I, I won't be paying 
fees cost, but I've still got to pay the 500 because they're fixed costs, remember. So I'll only be losing £500 if I shut down. If I remain open, though, I'm going to be paying £600. So if the average revenue is below the variable cost, as it is in this example, we really don't want to be remaining open. We want to shut down. And so we'll say, yep, we're going to do that. And we're not going to stay open in the short, even in the short run. And then you get to the long run situation, because in the long run you lose all your costs. So they all become variable. So in other words, in this case here, even though you're making a positive contribution in the short run, if your firm shuts down, you can lose all of the costs. You can even lose those fixed costs in the long run. So therefore, you're not making any loss, and that's better than making a £200 loss. So in the long run, all costs are variable. If you're making a supernormal loss, shut down. In the short run, some of those costs are fixed, so the argument is, if average revenue exceeds average variable cost, stay open. If average revenue is less than average variable cost, shut down. We'll see it in a diagram in a minute. So here we go. Here's your average total cost and average variable cost. And I've just chosen a particular point of output just to keep it simple, really. And when you go up, you say, well, hold on. What are the average total costs? There they are. Average revenue. Oh, dear, I'm making a super normal loss. OK, but what about the average variable cost? Well, there they are. So the argument is here that the supernormal losses are made, but you should stay open because the re average revenue is bigger than the average variable cost. Whereas here, in this situation, you can see that the average total cost is bigger, so you're making the supernormal losses, but you're not making a positive contribution because the variable cost is bigger than the average revenue. And so therefore, in this situation, in the short run, you should shut down. So hopefully that helps you to understand what we mean by the shutdown conditions. Now, even though that's technically true, what we've just talked about, there are other factors that you need to consider. And some argue that firms are able to remain open, even if you're making these losses, even if you're making losses in the long run, because you can make losses in the short or the long run for the following reasons. You might want, you might be a deliberate policy of lowering your prices and high, higher costs when a new firm enters the industry. So therefore, you might want to start up in a new industry. You're going to have quite high costs to start up and you want to get low prices in order to establish your customer base in the industry. So as a strategy, low prices with your high costs, uh, so you're making super normal losses, but you might still want to um, keep in the business for that reason that you're trying to establish customer base. And sometimes you argue that the lower prices are there to uh, get into the customer market, but also to drive other firms out of the market. Now obviously, if a new entrant comes into your market, again, you might want to reduce your price. And so you might want to make super normal losses in the short run um, because the new firms are entering the market and you want, might want to cut your prices, making sure that they can't really respond and they may not be able to remain in that market. So it's all about the strategies that the firms use. But how is that possible? Well, you have to argue that the firms have to have enough financial resources from your past trading, i.e. you've made your profits in the past and you've kept some of those in the business and your current losses are being covered by your past profits. Or you can argue that firms have the ability to borrow money or other operations that are from profitable and do a cross subsidization. So with this part of the business you might be making losses but you can either borrow money from banks, financial institutions, uh, raise shares, or you could cross-subsidise from profitable parts of the business. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good understanding of what we mean and how you can use um, the idea of contribution, the idea of shutdown conditions, and explain when businesses uh, stay in business and shut down in the short, in the long run, and then even in the long run they might still stay in business if they've got these two things happening here.